Hey guys! So today, before we jump in, we've got to do a little recap so we can understand what's going on. Throughout James, he's been telling us how we as Christians and mature Christians are to act and how to handle trials that come in our lives. Various trials, hard trials, things that are just make your life tougher and how we're to handle those things. He even just finished off talking about how we're to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to wrath because human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. And we as Christians want our lives to be doing and the example of God's righteousness. We want to to have everything we do be that, to show people God's righteousness. And we also know that being humble is how we receive the word of God, the the gospel. You have to be humble because if you're not, your pride gets in the way. But understanding that, James then gives us a very good warning about all this stuff he's told us, what we're to do as Christians. And then he warns us here in James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like someone looking at his own face in a mirror, for he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of a person he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer who works, this person will be blessed in what he does. So here we see that James tells us we need to be doers, not just hearers. Now, I want to make a case real quick. It's in the way you hear things. Now, there's this thing called, there's a difference between hearing and listening. There's a difference. Hearing, the definition of hearing is to perceive a sound. So you hear a bird tweeting off in the distance. You hear your parents talking to you from the other room. You can hear things. But listening, the definition of listening is paying attention to a sound or person. You're actually listening to it, you're paying attention. So if you're only hearing things, you're that person that like sits down, like here's a good example, actually a really good example. You're at home, you're in your room, you're playing video games or on social media or doing a puzzle or doing whatever you can do right now. And your mom calls for you and says, hey, can you come clean up the bathroom and do your chore? You know, go do that. And it kind of goes in one ear and out the other. And you're like, yeah, okay, whatever. But you didn't really pay attention to what she was saying. You're in your own little world on Instagram or TikTok or, or playing uh, Call of Duty or Ghost of Tsushima. You know, you're just doing whatever you want and you're not really listening. You're, you just heard her say something. That's it. That is one thing we need to work on is actually paying attention to what we hear because you don't want to be the guy at church who's just sitting there and lets it go in one ear out the other. You're thinking about what you want for lunch and who you're going to hang out with later. You don't want that. You want to actually pay attention to God's word. Now, the cool thing is, James here then compares the person who just hears, like just listens to the word, but doesn't actually do it. He talks about this person as a man who looks at himself in the mirror, sees himself, and then goes away and immediately forgets what he is, who he is and how he looked. That's a great example because let's take this example and put it in our lives. You wake up in the morning and you are just, ugh, you got hair going everywhere. You know, you don't have your makeup on uh, for girls, for guys, and well, guys and girls, you got drool hanging down your chin. You're just like, ugh, you wake up in the morning. It is not pretty. And you wake up, you look in the mirror, and you go, huh! and then you turn away to fix yourself. But the moment you turn away, you forget that you looked like that. And so you put on your clothes, you get your backpack, and you take off to school looking like a hot mess. Like, if, woo, you get to school and your, your classmates are like, mm -hmm. your, your teacher's concerned that something's wrong at home because you're just, you're, woo. And, and you go around like everything's hunky-dory. It's all fine. You're like, woo, yeah, great day, high five. This is how we are if we go to church and in our own Bible studies that we read the word 
and we kind of just like let it go in one ear and we're like, oh, I'm really hit by what's being taught right now. I'm listening. Oh, this, yeah, I really do this problem. And then you get up off the pew or you get away from reading the Bible and you immediately forget. You don't go out and do it. You don't make those changes. You're, it's just in one ear and out the other. That is like us with this mirror and this hot mess situation. You know, we wake up. In the morning, we look in the mirror or look at the Bible and see the problems with us in our life, the, the issues that God is trying to work on in our life. We see them and we go, Ugh. and then we get up and walk away and we immediately forget what those issues were. And we're walking around with hair everywhere, drool down on our shirt, and we're just like, hot mess walking through life. And life is just really tough. It's hard because we're not doing what God wants us to do and he's not... We're not doing the things to let him fix us and, and, and fix the things that are wrong because we're just not being doers of the word. It's not good. But on the flip side, what is the benefits of doing God's word? Well, here it talks about looking intently into the perfect law and persevering in it, not being a forgetful hearer. You, this person who does these things will be blessed in what he does. So, Looking into the law, which is the, this, and it, the law here is this perfect law of freedom. Talking about the law that Jesus made when he died on the cross. Not the Old Testament law, the Ten Commandments. We're not under that. We're under the law of Jesus through love, grace, and his sacrifice that we are made set free from his washing and his salvation. Being made, an, made anew, born anew. Now, in doing that, we look in, we get saved, and we persevere. That is key. Because you can be saved and not continue to walk with God. To, to, to not work on those things that are sin in your life. Like, oh yeah, I stopped cursing, but I still kind of like steal from the Circle K because I, I want a candy bar every once in a while. Or, you know, I curse all the time, but it's okay. God loves me. He, he loves me. You know, I'm saved. And that can even cause people to question if you're saved, if you don't really work on your walk, if you're not really living for Jesus. And that's a whole nother study. But for those of you that want to go, oh, I'm great how I am. Jesus loves me. Well, we have a call here. Second Timothy 1.9. He has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which is given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. God has called us to a holy calling. Not according to what we want and our works and what we do, but his works and what he wants us to do. That's his calling for us. And in Romans 12, 1, it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, right, looking at that perfect law, I urge you to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. We've talked about this. Guys, you are called to a holy calling, and we should live as a living sacrifice because of what Jesus did for us. Yeah, it's hard giving up our sins and looking at the mirror or the Bible and going, oh, I'm bad here. You know, I'm messing up. It's hard to see that, and it's harder to work on it and let God work on your life, but that's what we're called to do, to give up the, the sin that we want to do to live for God. So make sure that you don't think that, oh, I'm good how I am. You can always read the Bible and God can always show you where there's something that needs to be worked on in your life. So now that you're being a doer and you're focusing on him, you're going to be blessed because that hot mess that you were in the morning, that hair that was all tangled and knotted and nasty, God's sitting there combing it out and pulling the knots out. Yeah, pulling the knots out hurts, but it gets rid of the knots get some open and makes your hair flow perfectly like ha oh, and amazing and then you put the makeup on over all these like nasty you know it's, this is why I grow a beard so I can hide my chin you know it looks gross but you know wipes the drool away god working on us and us us being doers of his word it, it allows us to be blessed in life like it says the man who does the the person who will uh, that does this this person will be blessed in what he does I want to be blessed by the God of all creation. So make sure, guys, that when you hear a Bible study, you focus and you then do what it says. So, guys, 
I love you. I miss you. Um, stay safe. Hopefully we'll be able to hang out soon and start meeting again. So keep praying that we can. God bless.